Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. In this video, I'm going to be going over what I have done so far as for my side projects regarding reverse engineering Lego Creator Knight's Kingdom and trying to extract the 3D data, the three, you know, the 3D data model uh, models from the game. So with that said, uh, let me, I guess, dive right on into it. Um, to start off, I'm going to go over just a brief overview of the creators of the game and um, the software which was used to make LEGO Creator. Um, as you can see here, I have my virtual machine. It's Windows 32 7 bit. It's Windows 7 32 bit uh, virtual machine using Hyper-V um, on Windows 10. So um, on here, I have installed my um, the Superscape uh, virtual real reality technology, whatever VRT stands for. Um, Superscape is the company that was uh, that helps create both the Lego Creator series, uh, so Lego Creator the first game and Lego Creator Knights Kingdom the subsequent second game. Uh, so they had made different uh, programs which you can find in archive.org. Uh, I'll probably put a link in the description. But um, anyway, so these people are the ones that made the creator series as well as, well, the creator series. So on archive.org, I was actually able to find um, the one of the latest releases that they had done before being merged with um, Glue. I think it's called Glue technologies um, in 2008 so it's called VRT so in VRT it's a uh, it's a technology which allows you to create and play in the 3d space so you can move up down left right and then you can you know do all this scrolls uh, you can also import um, different objects pre-made if you wanted to just kind of get a feel for it so if you go to the editor uh actually where is it? view warehouse so under warehouse they have all these different things you have buildings you have all these different things right here you have sounds textures that you can have and then you have all these different things right here so for instance if you wanted to go to a people you have all these different things right here. So I'm going to choose Bob. Just click and drag and drop, which if you look at the functionality, it's eerily similar to that of um, Lego Creator. We have Bob right here. He uses a 3D model. And then if you wanted to go into the shape to edit it, all you got to do is like click on a section of Bob, and then you go to S, which is the shape editor. Inside of here, you have your X, Y coordinates, point lines, and whatnot. And then under here, you get a shape, and then you have uh, these various things right here. You do shape size, and you have you know you can duplicate do all this sort of stuff. But one of the uh, very interesting things is that they have under the edit tab for a script, they have these different things here. So you have shapes, palettes, messages, con configuration, and preferences. If I go to shapes, right here, they give a uh, a, um, they take all the data that's stored right here and they put it into a text editor which I think it's um, notepad um, but anyways they take it and then they create a shape portion of this right here so then they uh, this is automatically generated so the type of shape they have different groups chunk sizes they have different lines right here the name of the it the number then they have different facets so the facets, I believe, are um, similar to, I think they're similar to vertices, I can't remember, but uh, they're the faces of the points and lines, what connect them, and they have different colors associated with those different facets. Then you have the different shapes here, and it just goes on. Uh, there's different types of data here, so you have the points, and then you have geometric or static, I believe, is or relative. And then you can have different flags, controllers, so on and so forth. So this is the shape editor which I had pre-built into the VRT 
program, and this is how they made the actual characters in the Lego series. Um, uh, whenever you want to just visualize the information, you have Visualizer right here. And then if you wanted to go to Viscape, it's this thing right here. The World Editor, this is kind of what's like for a LEGO Creator Knights Kingdom. Whenever you want to uh, not pl click the play button, but you want to rather just add different things to your world, that's what this is right here. You just click and drag the different characters, and then they have them. Um, oh, they have the different things you know you can click and drag onto. This is kind of a bit of the overview for the um, for the technology which they used. This unfortunately is version five point six zero, and um, the version which Lego Creator Knights Kingdom uses is five point seven zero. So there's not really, um, <laughs> you can't cross-reference the LEGO data input into here. I was able to download some help uh, application, and using the reference books, if you go to the shape editor, I was able to extract this information right here. So you can see that the shapes, 5,000 are the maximum shapes, maximum facets, mesh, points, edges, all that. The size cannot exceed 65,500 bytes. And then the total cannot be um, 500,000 in the shape editor workspace. So this is just like a general overview of the software itself. Um, let's see here, was there anything else I wanted to show? Uh, yeah, so what I'm trying to, so my idea kind of is to figure out how to get this functionality back for the edit and script. And then from here, um, be able to extract this information and using Noesis to uh, essentially take this data and put it back into 3D space in more modern OBJ format. Uh, so that's kind of like a brief overview of the uh, the of the software and then uh, kind of like what my ideas are. Um, I guess going a little bit deeper. So you have the world which is this thing right here, the world. So you have your objects, then you have your different objects within them, and then you have the standard points here. So you have frames, light sources. You have different coding here that you can do. Um, this is the uh, this is the scripting for the animations. You have the different chunks for dynamic for dynamics. You have the rotations, and then you have the characters within them. So inside of here, you have your children of the world. So it's basic, you know, object-oriented programming where you have the parent and child. So then for your children, you have, you know, Bob in this case with his coordinate systems, X, Y, Z, his colors, rotations, so on and so forth. Then you have the different parts of Bob, which are just the groups of, uh, shapes for him. Um, whenever you try and run this, uh, say for instance you wanted to try and run like a, let's see here, it's not VRT. Let's go to Viscape. So when you try and run Viscape, I want to say it's VRMO. Okay, maybe it's not Viscape. It's probably SVR. Yeah, it's SVR. So when you're trying to run SVR like uh, this, it's going to say that you cannot run this program because it's a Netscape Navigator or ActiveX control. Um, in case you are unfamiliar, ActiveX is was a technology made by Microsoft to run 3D graphics and other things in the Internet Explorer browser. So it's like an early stage of WebGL. It's Microsoft's own version of WebGL before WebGL kind of took over the space because of open source by the Kronos Group. So ActiveX, I think it's part of their DirectX. Um, I would say it's part of the DirectX library that gives you 3D, 3D graphics. So this is what 
it's trying to do. It's trying to take this and uh, run it into an explorer, but because it is an ActiveX control, you cannot just directly run it into the browser. And then SSWatch does nothing. Um, well, it does do something, but you have to have it running in a parent uh, executable. Um, yeah, so instead of doing it by itself, you have to have something like VRT, which is this right here, to run it. And then VRT will then go and access Superscape, uh, Viscape, and then it also access SSWatch. So that's kind of like an overview. Um, the these programs also use uh, SPR, which I think stands for sprites or something. I don't know what SPR stands for. RC, RSC is resource, MSG is message, FNT is font. Then they also have palette as well, um, .pal. Then they have world, WRLD. Then they have dev files and configuration files and DLLs, which are dyna dynamic linked libraries. So they have all these different things all connected into the WVRT application. Um, but some of these are custom made, but they're all required in order to have the program run. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the .dev file right here. Uh, so that's kind of a brief overview of um, kind of the whole application itself. Um, I'm going to breaking these videos into sections because I don't know how long they're going to be in this section I'm going to be going over what I have done kind of research wise and how I approach this to get to where I am now. Uh, to start off I uh, began looking at different tools such as uh, 3DX you know just trying to f certain research tools to uh, get the 3D data um, so initially, I went and looked at something like a 3DX Ripper or 3D Ripper, then a 3D, uh, 3D to, I think it's 3D XML to OBJ was another one that I looked at, and then, um, and then as I began researching more and more, I um, discovered that uh, the best bet would be to go and kind of do reverse engineering through the hex format so um well i guess so when i was doing the reverse engineering of just trying to get the information using the alternatives i was successfully able to get like the textures so this is the ground texture this is the face texture then you have the body texture however whenever i tried to put the uh, data into like blender here you can see that it only takes the 2d models it doesn't actually get the 3d information but i know for a fact that this is 3d uh, because it does use the d3d mml or lmm uh, dynamic link library and actually i have kind of a demo here so this is you know a basic mesh but if i you know go down see how it has different things which it draws So it clearly does D3 dimension, but as you can see here, yeah, it's, I'm not exactly good at Blender, <laughs> but I mean, it does do to an extent uh, render in 3D, as you can see, it doesn't do just 2D rendering. However, the capturing tools, which I used, uh, did not, uh, cannot, inject properly to capture this information. And as you can see, there's a bunch of random, like uh, like reflections and whatever inside of the capture. So it's not ideal given the circumstances. I mean, using this, I guess I could, in theory, um, I guess I could in theory, you know, just kind of take my time and redo this, but uh, Anyways, that's kind of what I did for the reflections. This is kind of as close as I got to getting the information. It's just this uh, information right here. So uh, with that, I began to kind of go into the hex reverse engineering portion and began going deep into the actual 
um, hex itself to try and figure out what was going on. Uh, here, let me put this back. So with this, I start off by here by looking at just one basic uh, one basic script. So if you take a look at the dot, um, if you take a look at Bob here, which is a dot VCA um, file, which is what Superscape used. So you can see that it has the header file of Superscape here. Then it has the VRT version 5.10, which they all do this. This is just pre strings built into the actual application itself. Then inside of here, you have the actual VRT file. The VRT file holds um, the thumbnail. It can hold the sprite or whatever SPR stands for. It holds the shape data, which is what holds the 3D information. The palette, which is the colors. The world file, which is where the, um, which stores the interactions of the actual character itself and how it runs. So, you know, go forward, go back, rotate left, rotate right. It has all that pre-built here. So inside the VRT, as you can see, um, you have the thumbnail and then you have these random characters right here. Well, if you take a look at this, it's going to be 0170 and then you see uh, the dot here, 2E. So it's actually... Um, you see here, this is uh, zero, yeah. So this is memory address, what, zero, 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 F4. So if you do, so for instance, I'm look at the thumbnail, right? So if you do F4, and then go to the very end of where I have, uh, where I have the thumbnail data, uh, which I believe is, somewhere I can't remember where yeah let me just show the photo I'll make more sense here anyways so VRT <clears throat> you have dot VRT which is 2e565254 and then you have these things right here so 0144058 and then 1111b7 if I then go to, uh, say for instance, the shape, if you take the, oh yeah, I'm sorry, it's, the, it's the beginning. So 53484150, it's gonna be 144. And it's 10C minus 24F, which is where the 2E is located here. Um, so extrapolating this, uh, if you, uh, you have the dot VRT right here. So this is 00F4. And then you have sum right here, 54548554D. So if I took this and subtracted it from the dot, from the address here, which is F4, it should give me, um, 0170 because it's using little Indian so that's kind of the general how this program stores the data so it takes all the headers and ports it here then it at it zeroes out space and then it goes to the next section as the data there then it begins zeroing out more space always starts with superscape followed by the next section well, I guess except for a thumbnail. It doesn't do it for the thumbnail. Uh, no, it does it for the thumbnail too. It does it for everything. They always add Superscape followed by some data here. So then if we take a look at the actual data where it's stored, I, um, in this example, we take a look at shape. You have the, uh, I don't know what this is exact. Oh, this is the, where the first data is stored, like how much data is here. And then you have the actual numbers of the first group. So inside of here, you have 82 points. And in hex, that's 52. 
And then you have the number of cells, which is going to be what the number is in hex 06. Then you have the point address, which this is dynamic. This doesn't stay, um, but ideally it's going to be 0001. Then you have the frame, which is stored in, which is 0. And then you have the position, which is 5546, 14868, and 7096, which if you take these addresses here and convert them into integer values, they match up. So this is how the data is stored for all of the information, and it, it continues on inside of here. So this is how the data is stored. I know this is what I was found while doing the reverse engineering, where the data was stored, uh, how they store the points and the lines and everything. But from what I understand, it, that there is no actual um, like logic to how they're stored. It doesn't go points first, then lines, then... Well, they don't even use polygons. They just use points, lines, and uh, facets, and colors, and whatever else. There's no actual... Well, the colors they do store at the end. But for the shape data specifically, there's no specific order. So it could be points first, it could be lines first. There's no you know, logic to it. So uh, this is what I first found out doing reverse engineering. And then uh, going to... I guess these two, uh, with help from uh, some people in the version engineering community, they were able to actually help me figure this part out, um, the whole offsets of where the files are stored. So you have, you know, the .vrt, then shapes and everything, as stated earlier. And then, uh, so first it'll go shape, and then you have the palette, which is the colors. And then here's the palette. So the offset again, 05 AD, and then with 10 C. So that's kind of where the data is located. And then for the world right here, um, let me put up the world, which will load in the background. You have the same thing, 11 B7, which if you look back here, 11 B7. And it uses a little end again, so that's why it's going from right to left instead of left to right. So uh, that I was able to have found out by some other people in the uh, reverse engineering community who assisted, well, one person um, who helped me out with that. So then uh, with the reverse engineering of this done, I began looking into, uh, I guess I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. So here's the data, which I was able to extrapolate. So as you can see, you have the name here, test cube. Yeah, they have the facets and the memory address, and they're put into different chunks. So on my left was the base case file, and on my right was the actual updated file that I used for Superscape. So as you can see, the data is updated here. So you have the first group, all this data matches, all this data matches. Then when I added one more line, the data updated for this group right here. So it went from 0e to 10, which if you look at hex, 10 um, is, I believe, 17. And then 0e uh, is 15, because 0f, I believe, is 16. Um, yeah. So it's 17 and 16. So anyways, that's what was added here. And you can see that the data is the exact same, except I updated one more point, one more I'm going to facet here. So in this section, I'm going to be going over what I have done for trying to reverse engineer the program itself, trying to figure out how it works, the intricate details. Uh, so at, to start off, I began using tools. Um, let me open up my reverse engineering. Oh, I don't have it open. Okay. So inside of my tools, I began with API trace. With API trace, I was able to successfully uh, instantiate um, instantiate an instance of Lego S or SS three D Lego SS Lego three D whatever it's called. Uh, what's it called? SS three D Lego two thousand um, separately into a new space with API trace, and then from here, I was able to. Um, Let's see, 
I was able to look at the various um, calls that it made. So let me open PowerShell window here. Anyways, um, I was able to open this up in API Trace to get it looked at, but it didn't give me any insight. All it did was, um, yeah, all it did was show me the draw. It used Direct 2D. So it just gave me a draw to a single frame. It didn't give me any insights to actual how the data was being called. So then next I went in and I looked at the Process Explorer right here. So in Process Explorer, uh, let me, uh, I guess let me do a demo for this right quick. So inside of here, this is the startup. You have your character, your start, and then you have your different um, maps you can do. I'm just gonna load a basic map, but uh, before I do this, let me see if this will work. So right now, it just has creator KK right here, instantiated, but if you come back here, load a map, press enter, it's going to instantiate SS Watch, and then SS Watch also instantiates LEGO SS3 LEGO 2000. And if you take a look at this a little bit further, right here, you'll see that it has the path, which goes directly to the XE uh, executable. And then you have the uh, command line, which does a specific um, argument. So it takes the XE. Then it passes it a plugin right here, which this is dynamic. It's not always the same number, it actually changes. And then it has these different things that it passes in. So background palette, hide frame, hide mo movement bar. And it has this information right here too. So uh, that is the way that it goes and um, retrieves the information to interact with the 3D world. So if I actually open this up, in uh let me see here if i open this up in explorer an elemento go back to app data local temp uh let me bring this over so inside of here it this is part of the file too they do these random like four letter strings which i have no idea uh, specifically what they're doing. I'm in the process of figuring that out. But the viz2, this is an XVR file right here. And this is instantiated to help interact with the characters. That's what um, VRT uses to, um, I guess, view the data in the 3D world. I'm not quite sure exactly. <laughs> the documentation doesn't really help a whole lot here. Um, so then if I actually go to and this I do have open. Then we go to constructive. Under constructive, Lego Creator Knights Kingdom. Under temp, you'll see that has the background images pre-populated here. And that has Creator 2000, which is going to be another XVR file. And then you have, uh, and then if I come here, let me move this out of the way right quick. Come here. Uh, see here okay this still works this is not functioning intended so I click here and drag here and then I come back to here it now has an import but this import is actually the file the model that I just imported in this case it's uh, Cedric the bull with his sword and shield so then if you note right here it's a hundred four or 106 kilobytes so then if I come back here and I do Cedric on his horse, the uh, information changes. And then if I do this right here, um, I forget his name. But uh, yeah, so it changes for each file. It's not the same. So it, that's how it loads the data into temp to get the uh, things here. 
and if I wanted to, um, I guess, restart this, it should um, it should have allowed me to see it. I don't know why it's not. Oh, yeah. Anyways, ideally, it would uh, show me. Um, it would restart and allow me to view it. But uh, anyways, that's how the information is moved for this particular game. So that's how I was able to figure out um, where the how the game actually executes itself not executes itself, executes data to instantiate. Um, and then to further kind of go along here, uh, if I now go into the software which I've used, so to start off, I'll go into x32 debugger. So inside x32 debugger, I should have some pre-saved. Um, uh, file, recent files. Yeah, let me just do this one. So inside of here I have these different files which I have pre-done already um, to get a clue for it. So then if I go to right click and then I do, I'm going to just search for all user modules string references. As you can see they use Huffman code here as well and then you have the SS3D LEGO 2000 and it has API calls. So instantiate this at, at memory address 48B578. And then it has these buffer errors. It has all these different string indicators right here. The superscape. So it gets the world, superscape, the shape, superscape, then the palette, then the config. Then it gets the config again. And then it gets the messages. And then it adds the not named. It goes through for the VRT and all this sort of stuff right here. Then you have the uh, different SCL, which is a superscript, whatever language. It's their own little script which they use. It's based off of C. Uh, then they have just all this pre built logging information. And then they have <clears throat> going down here, you know, the edit different um, floats which I just saw and it's probably right in front of my face but anyways they have these different you know float information which is done through SS3D the unsigned information right here which is pushed and they have the palette files and then scrolling down they have the warehouse the preferences the objects all this sort of stuff you know, the menu items, the main and the max, then they have this right here. And then they have the different counters, ranges, and all that. So that's kind of what they do for the disassembler. If I go into, say for instance, search for all system modules, and then I want to say it's intermodular calls. So use user32 for a ton of stuff uh, to get the cursor, get the classes, get the memory allocations for kernel. Um, then they have this thing called, well, then they use GDI32, which is a 2D API part of the Direct or DirectX library, which um, from what I understand, this is how they get the bitmap information. So this is how they uh, get the associated item with the bitmap on the 2D display. When you first click it and when you drag it onto it, it then writes it to the window itself. Um, from what I understand. Um, so then you have these different things right here, like load the image, send the message, get the message, all that stuff. But if I type in here, SS3D Lego, yeah, the all this information right here for the addresses. Then if I did uh, GRMIX, okay, I guess that's not part of the system. That's part of the user. Uh, let's see here, GDI32 was another one. So this is how you get the point, you get the DC, you get the 
I don't really know what most of this stuff does, but you get the object, translate the character set, get the offset of the window, you you know, set the window, get the object, select it, and just do all these random calls. Um, it's basically what it does repeatedly. Then you get the palette entries, get the palette, get the bitmap. So that's the bitmap of the images for the um, models, which if I go to SS under, I think it's called Lego Fun. Then I go to game, uh, I go to main interface. So these are all bitmaps right here, their properties. They're all bitmap files, BMPs. So I think this is what it's doing when it comes to the 2D GDI 32. Is it's getting these and then associates those with the um with the model and then it imports the model to the window. Um, and then I did use a BMS uh, script to get this information. And uh, the creator two thousand is the excavator file. So they just copy this into the um, temp right here. And then they call it viz, which it's, which because I stopped the program, it's not here anymore. But uh, let's see here. Let's see if there's one still here. Uh, it's yeah. Wait, here it is. Yeah. So this is what they do. They call it viz here, but it's actually called Creator Two Thousand in the actual um, package package packages themselves. So uh, anyways, that's just a, another thing that I found. <clears throat> so then they have three GDI 32, and then they should have one full here. So they get the, whoops, address. So they have it here. They do the, um, you know, set poly polyfill and do all this sort of stuff. So this is something which they get from the hash table itself. Um, they do MFC42, uh, and they use the ordinals, which I do have the actual um, MFC42 file here. It should be, um, yeah, that's the DLL, but then I also have the MS, MFC42 Oh, that's in my actual programming folder itself. So CJS Lego. Yeah. So I have the. I found this on. Um, I guess I don't have it here. But I had the MFC42 um, file, and then I was able to map it using Python. Anyways, so they do use the MFC42 ordinals, and then they map them. To that. Now let me go back to my thing here. So let me search for all modules and then let me do intermodule calls. Uh, yeah, so then I guess one last thing I want to note right here and while this loads. So one last thing I want to note is this right here. This should have GM RIX. I could have sworn it was GRMIX. GR. No, no. Oh, I guess they don't have it in this instance. GR I. Interesting. GR mix. It should be GR mix. Uh, they do have this graphic thing which they call. It's GRMIX, and then they also have um, here. Where is it? Where is it located? It actually should have been above me. So they have this, and then they should have also used GRMIX, but I guess it just is preloading the basic thing itself. Continuing this, and it's gonna give me the error saying that it cannot run because it's a non-activex thing. Okay, so it isn't gonna work. But um, 
Anyways, it uses GRMIX, which is a dev call from them as well. So then going from here into my next application, which is Ghidra. So inside of Ghidra, I, as you can see, yeah, grmix.dev. So they have these different things like dshow, entity, grmix, pack manager, obviously is where they store the data. And they have these four character files, which is uh, where they store the temporary information before they put into an import file. Then they have these .ocx's, which is a uh, ActiveX controller. Um, it's an ActiveX controller extension. Then they have the .exe's, sswatch, ss3d, and p.dll. So they have all these different things right here. But if we go to, say, for instance, the code browser for Ghidra, um, it did a pretty good job of getting the data for the different function calls. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what they're doing. <laughs> it's been a hot second since I've used C++ for uh, any hardcore programming. So uh, I'm still brushing up on that. But anyways, um, so let me go back here. So they have the headers, then they have the, you know, just the general stuff here. But if you look at the resource table specifically, um, you can see that uh, there's string references and all these other items right here for these different icons. Um, yeah, you have these different resource groups. And if I wanted to search for strings, you have all this data right here. So it's pushing all this information to the stack. Um, and it has all the different moves, which if I'm not mistaken, this is the data itself, which is actually being pushed from the shape files, the world, and the whatever else into Swatch or something. I don't know. Uh, but then you have these right here, which if you take a look back to what I had earlier uh, in the other section with the Instantiation of SS Watch and SS3 Lego. These are the um, these are these strings right here that they pass in, and they're given specific labels. So plugin name, base. It doesn't do 16-bit, but you do have background palette, idle, hide frame, hide movement bar, and then no detect, which this isn't passed in, but this one is. This one is. This is. This is. Uh, Base is not, name is, and so is plugin. But it also doesn't get passed in uh, any of these things right here. So and then if we go further down, you can see that you have you know these different print statements right here, which it doesn't it's not being referenced by anything. Um, no functions are referencing them. Or maybe they are. Um, no, that's just the length. So, um, and then you have the different other strings set right here. So, invalid bit, which I think this is referenced in the function. So, you just have these different things right here. And then you have corrupt files right here. Then I believe there's going to be version somewhere. Then you have the number of files. Um, then you have these floating point values, which I showed earlier in the uh, in the information. Then you have object number. Then you have float fixed char. And then you go through here. You have the object itself, which, if I'm not mistaken, the object is going to be the name or the part of the uh, character. So you have like head, arm, arm, sword, leg, leg, shield. I haven't really come across gold sample. I don't know really what this stuff is. Wave format is going to be um, the wave, I think, for the actual water itself. And then it has these different things like redraw requests, this information right here. Get the cursor. Yeah, they're sprites. That's what I thought. SPRT is for sprite, SPR sprite. So um, you have the devices, messages, resources, palette, shape, world, configuration, all this sort of stuff. <laughs> they always start with superscape. Um, 
yeah and then there was one uh, I don't know if this is what's gonna work uh, let me edit so it this is just an example but it's gonna be where is it edits appearance and values uh, here it is it's this right here it's the edit current shape file as a script file they still have it inside the resource table, but they don't have any th label associated with it. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can do like a SQL in or not SQL inject, DLL inject to get this um, working. Not quite sure, but uh, uh, that's something I'm looking into as one possibility to get the shape information. Um, yeah, and they just have these random other stuff right here. So that is what I used for Gidra to kind of go through. Um, it does do a pretty decent job of doing the functions from what I understand. Um, and then I asked ChatGPT and <laughs> GitHub Copilot for assistance as well, um, which they have been for the most part helpful, but not ideal. So uh, yes, and then uh, recently, let me move on to the next part, which is Visual Studio right here. I also did use IDA free, but it was not exactly ideal. Um, I couldn't figure it out. It seemed overwhelming. Granted, all this stuff is overwhelming, but uh, yeah, IDA seems just not intuitive, so I didn't do it. Anyways, so let me open up a project and then let me go to, actually, it's right here. Let's do this one. Okay, it wants to do that. I'm gonna do this. Okay, let me just do it this way. Okay. So if I go and I just look at this in the view itself, it does actually open up the executable in Visual Studio, no problem. Under bitmaps, you have the Superscape logo for 148. Then you have the other one here. And then you have the different, excuse me, bitmaps for the Ike excuse me, iconography. Then if you look at the cursor, these are just the different cursors that they have. So the hand to point, click and drag. So these are all the uh, various things. So that's the information plus pull an object onto the screen. Uh, that's the rotate. That's the move and closer and further away. So those are the cursors which they have instantiated in here. Then, uh, what in the world? They have the uh, active viewport. So this is the basic box that they have. So they have button, 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 button. For the dialogue here, it's just selecting an object, edit the world, see? Edit world information. So they still have it here file information, status information, virtual worlds. This is just the generic stuff they have for the VRT software. SCL program output, the setup, select objects. So all this stuff is still inside the executable. And they have the progress of loading, the information right here. The timings working and then they have the save box um yeah so let me go back to where that was so this is the edit world information so this is kind of what they do for um for what i saw in the section with vrt so you can edit the world information here but you can also edit the world information using or the shape information script. So if I can access this information somehow, I should hopefully be able to get the 3D information of the models. DIB, I don't quite know what this stands for, um, but this is part of the headers itself. They're all zero, they're all like this. Um, nothing too much to glean from here. It's just empty space. And then go to the icons, again, Superscape, both 32 and 16-bit. 
and then you have all the icons here. I don't want to pin it. Which these are matched inside of the actual. Uh, so with um, with the Lego SS or with Crater KK, they use an over. Uh, they use a layout. So instead of having this information, they use the ActiveX controllers to change these icons to be more Lego y which is why you get the uh, actual Lego stuff themselves. So inside of the menu items here, you see how the reset world, level, viewpoint, display mode. So all this stuff is still inside of the executable itself. Right here. So you have the open, which is going to be the open world, the reset world, summary, info, print, stuff like that. And then you have the string table. Inside of here are all the strings associated, which I saw earlier in uh, Ghidra. So all the uh, strings, you know, the search for strings. So all of these right here inside the well, inside the resource section. So all of these right here, you'll see them again right here. And they all have values and IDs associated with them. So if I look for, uh, let's see here, it's going to just be somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah, edits locally triggered, SCL, global. Then it's going to give me, I just passed by it. Uh, flips, sets, values, creates. So it does all that stuff here too. It's just the same data, but in an executable. Wait, yes, here we go. World, shape, active, palette. Yeah, so it has all this information right here. Uh, so I know that it still references these, so I'm pretty sure it still be, should be able to access the um, script itself. Then you have this bitmap right here, and then the version is going to be 5.71, which all the other ones are 5.60. Um, I have not tried just changing the file version, seeing if that would work. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. Um, but uh, anyways, that's kind of what I've done for this section right here. And then if I wanted to just look at some of the other files, let me open up SS Watch. So SS Watch just has the icon, Superscape. And then it has the version 5.71. And then if I were to go to um, the parent folder, which I don't think I can access here, um, I do have, or yeah, let me open it up through here. So let me go to the parent folder and do creator KK. Yeah, the accelerator right here. Um, and then you have the AVI right here, which you get the draw lists and all the others, and all the other goodies. And then if you go to here, this is the AVI list. And then you go to the cursors, you have all these different cursors. So down, up click, that's the pointer icon, the left and then the right. Dialogue, this is just what the dialogue looks like. So this is what one of them will look like, that's uh, I think the username, then this is going to be, uh, that might be settings. This is the main layout. So you have your um, click, click, drop down menu for the, uh, this is the save button, the button to open the models from the warehouse, drop down menu with the items inside of it. You have the, uh, 
Let's see, that's the action. I think that might be action. That's delete. That's going to be, you know, rotate, blah, 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 blah. Then you have uh, the movie button here, the play button here that makes them move. You have the dialogue button right here. Forget what this is. Might be more dialogue. That's going to be the exit button. And uh, that, I don't know what that is. Um, and these are going to be the movement buttons right here. Then this is just how the text shows up whenever Richard talks to you. So rich edit is Richard talking. Forget what that is. Uh, this might be um, the different worlds, maybe. This is going to be the editor whenever you want to make your own little castle or jail. It is one of the challenges. Uh, so this is the menu where you have the different blocks. This is going to be where you can move them around and everything. Then you have the, uh, let's see here, uh, three of them. I don't know what this is. Might be settings. Don't know why I keep on doing that. Don't know what this is. And then I don't know what that is either. So that's kind of just the dialogue. Then you have icons here. So that's the neutral. And this is, I think, 16 and 32 bit respectively. No, they're both 32 bit. Never mind. Then you have the menu, which uh, I think this is done in the background. It connects it. These are the string resources. So you have the dialogues, ready, quit. Always find things right here. And then you have the version, which is going to be 5. Point, or yeah, 1.0. So that is the Creator KK um, information right here. And you have, again, SS Watch. So they're. Uh, they, they all kind of work in tandem with one another. Um, and another thing which I should bring up um, is this. Go back here, which I forgot to show earlier. And then I bring up my virtual machine. Go here. So if I go to VRT. So VRT is uh, this right here. The application. And if we go to 3D control, um, let's see here, is this point I want to show? So VRT is actually what I believe this is right here. Is Creator KK and VRT? These two are the the same. They point. They're the same application. Um, because VRT instantiates it both SS Watch and Viscape, and that's what Creator KK does. Um, it's just that uh, in here, this is the complete program, whereas in here, they have it scripted set separately. Actually, no, I am mistaken. So VRT, WVRT, this is going to be SS3 Lego. These two are the same application right here. And then if you take a look, they have the font message resource uh, sprite, and some of these files actually are the same size. So you have the font, which is the same size, then you have the messages right here, which I think it looks at, yeah, the, it, it thinks this is an Outlook item, but it is that message, it is that message, so this one's a little bit bigger. Then you have the resource, 75 and 75, or 75 and 489, so there are some differences here. Granted, this is editing software, this is just release software, so there's going to be differences. But then you have entity, and then entity should be up here it's um, done by name. So uh, WVRT and SS3 LEGO are both the same thing. They just call this SS3 LEGO 2000 and they call this WVRT. And then obviously you don't see SS Watch here. That's because it is part of the Viscape stuff under SVR. <clears throat> Or uh, maybe I'm mistaken because uh, 
yeah, maybe Viscape. So I forgot what it said. Um, SS3D is Viscape. It is not WVRT. I apologize. That was my mistake. And then they uh, just call these dot OC. They just call these things differently. But it's all Viscape. That's right, because it, this gives you the error. It's an ActiveX control. It's an ActiveX control. So, yeah. So SS3D Lego is Viscape. As you can see, you have the de dot dev. Then you have the dot dev for viz here. Mm, viz dot dev is somewhere over here. Anyways, <clears throat> they have sprite resource metrics font, sprite resource metrics font, and actually these are again similar. So 76, 76, see that they're actually the exact same. Then font is 17, font is 17. Sprite is 24, and then Sprite is 24. So th they're actually the same files. Um, they're just, quote unquote, different, which Viscape here is 5.60, and this is 5.71. So there are some slight differences into what is used, but for the most part, they're all the same. <clears throat> so Creator KK, I believe, is is actually um, yeah creator kk i believe is the vrt because this references ss watch and um, and viscape which is why this instantiates it when you click on something and wvrt instantiates it by default you have to click on it uh, it's just a strip node version so uh, that is, uh, that's kind of what I have so far for this. Um, yeah, uh, I, is there anything else which I wanted to cover? Um, I'll keep you right here. Let me minimize you, minimize you. So I have made some posts on Reddit trying to get uh, help because I am personally lost as to what to do next. Um, so I did make one post here, then another post here, which I added more context to it, uh, some background. So hopefully this kind of made things a bit more clear. Obviously people have seen it because I have eight upvotes, well, seven upvotes, and I've had 1.4 thousand people view this post, but no one has replied back. So I don't know <laughs> if you're like, oh yeah, good job, but that's that. Um, but everything that I have made in this video, I've also put inside this post and I try to keep this up to date. I also made a post on Stack Exchange, basically going over the same exact thing. Um, just updated this recently with Ghidra information in X32 debug. Uh, yeah, but I am just kind of lost at this point as to what to do. So with all that said, if you are good at reverse engineering and you'd like to help me tackle this project, feel free to leave a comment below. I am currently <laughs> losing my mind. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be too complex to reverse engineer because it's made in the 2000s, right? So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, and I do understand how everything's mapped out. It's just I don't know how they know where the point data, like this specific thing right here, how the script works and how the data works. So if you're interested in, you know, helping out with this project or whatnot, I do have, uh, I do have it on my repo. Uh, let me bring that up. Go to GitHub. And then it's called Lego game. Here it is. So it's an empty repository. Um, um, but yeah, so this is going to be the modernization, which I'm hoping to make. Um, obviously, I'm not going to call it Lego game. It's just a placeholder that I put for my repo. But 
I'm hoping to make a 3JS project from this, uh, but I need to get the assets from the game itself. So if, um, yeah, so if y'all would like to collaborate and make this come to fruition, definitely feel free to reach out, either comment below or comment on any of the <laughs> multiple posts, which I have. Um, yeah, I also made a post here on Rock Raiders United, which I think this is hidden. Um, but yeah, uh, so this actually does have the 2D file formats. So if, um, obviously I'm kind of doxing myself, but <clears throat> yeah, that was me. Um, this is all the data which I downloaded in two dimensions. Um, and I did save them in Blender format in .obj. I haven't done the buildings because the buildings are too complex to do um, for two dimension. So yeah, if you're interested in, um, you know, helping out with this, I would, I personally would greatly appreciate it just to get the shape format. If you want to, you know, further do anything else, feel free. Obviously <laughs> the sky's the limit for this, but, uh, yeah, so that's basically the, just this video. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.